24 to 19, you are booking that, right? You've actually been booking it all week. <laughs> so, Joy and Shannon, I remind you, I did a commercial before this show launched yep. in which I stood up in my movie seat. Remember this one? Yep. And I said, this is going to be the year that Romo and Dez stay, stay healthy. healthy. Remember that? I remember it. So we have reached merely week four of the NFL season, <laughs> and I have neither. <laughs> I have no Romo, and I, now I have no Dez. But I still have hope. I will admit to you, this is a huge turning point game for my Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm going to go this far right now. This is make it or break it for my Cowboys if, in fact, they want to stay in position to make what I think will be a run at the division title as the schedule toughens and toughens. Up next is Cincinnati. We saw them last night. They looked pretty good. Now they get a mini buy, 10 days off before their next game at Jerry World. Mm -hmm. The following week, it's on to Aaron Rodgers and back to the scene of the crime because that was a catch. Was we it? all know it was a catch. Was not. But they have to go back up to Green Bay. So it gets nothing but tougher without Tony Romo. Who do you play next? Next, after uh, that. After they play Green Philadelphia, Bay. Carson Wentz, the Hall of Famer. He's already in. They, they, wait, the Eagles are on a bye week. And so I, I read this last night. They just went ahead and and put him in Canton, right? Didn't they put him in this week? Well, he's getting they rookie. Just had a of, he's going to win rookie of the year. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll Book see it. about that. Book that. All right. So here I go to San Francisco. And as our man, Eric Mangini, correctly pointed out, they are hellacious good on defense at home. They rock the Rams, who are now on a big roll offensively, yep. right? They've yep. won two games, exploding on offense. 28 to nothing on opening night at San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Wow. Who knew? Now, my team goes to San Francisco without Des Bryant, their best receiver, obviously, without the best left tackle in football. I don't think Ty Smith is going to play with back issues. Without the, the offensive guard who graded out the highest of anyone in the best offensive line in football last year, Lyle Collins, who's gone for God knows how long. And probably without Orlando Skandrick, who was easily the best player on defense as they made their run into the playoffs two years ago. He was gone last year with the knee injury. You still hyping something from okay. two years ago? Okay, but he is a stud on defense, and we haven't even seen him this year because he's pulled both of his hamstrings. He's never even made the so Pro So the injury yep. gods, as usual, are not smiling on my Dallas Cowboys. But I still think they're going to win this game because I still believe in that quarterback. I still believe that, that Dak Prescott will continue to make the right decision at the right time and throw exactly the right ball, catchably, right into the right spot, to the right receiver, on time, play after play after play. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand you this pick on a silver and blue platter because you should win this game. Every Everything says 49ers in this nope, game. No, no, no. Don't hedge. Don't nope, tell me nope. what should happen. Stick with your Cowboys. Yeah. I, I'm going to ride or die with my Cowboys, and I think I'm going to die in this game because you got me, you got me on the ropes in this one. But I'm going to tell you that I believe in Dak Prescott as the emerging leader. And I'm going to say this again. I loved how he handled the Des Bryant situation, just basically saying, I don't even see who I'm throwing to. I, I read the defense. I pick the open receiver. And if Dez isn't there, we'll be just fine on offense. Do you believe that? I do. I believe it. And I believe he believes it. And I think that was a unifying statement that he made. Our big issue on the table right now is, did Dez Bryant split this team apart? Or did the way he missed two, two days of practice and meetings, <laughs> did it unify this team? I think it brought them together because I love what Jason Witten said, said yesterday. He used the mosquito line that Jerry Jones used. I don't want to use the line again, but I think he was making a joke of it mm -hmm. that it's not like, you know. It, it, the this mosquito. Is, yeah, the mosquito where it, this is minuscule to that locker room. I think they're, they're moving on from Des Bryant right now. I think they don't care anymore. Like this is typical Des behavior or misbehavior. And they're saying, you know what? We can go win without him. And I'm about to give you the X factor in this game. This is why I'm going to pick my Dallas Cowboys. Number 19, check him out. He's going to be the difference in this game. His name is Bryce Butler. He's going to step in and step up for Des Bryant. 6'3", 215 pounds. Do you know who he is? I don't know if you followed him. Oh, the Butler's, the butler's going to do it. The Butler's going to do it because Bryce Butler ran 4'3 at the Combine. 
Bryce Butler was drafted in the seventh round by the Oakland Raiders, traded last year to the Cowboys to fill in for the injured Des Bryant, and immediately got hurt and was pretty useless last year. And yet last Sunday, I don't know if it's Sunday night, he caught what should have been a touchdown pass. It was blatant pass interference. It went uncalled. But he will get behind people if you single cover him. He's going to be single covered, and he will be double trouble for the San Francisco 49ers. I agree with you. Little measly Beasley will get double covered. He'll get bracket coverage in, in, in the middle. For of the what? Field. Huh? Why are you going to double? He's, he's the best receiver on the team. He's, only, he's caught 20 balls for 203 with yards. With that being said, yeah. I'm not doubling no Cole Beasley. Watch. You just watch. They'll say, Maybe. we're going to take him away. They're, they'll say, he's your security blanket. We're taking him out of the game. Maybe on a crucial third down situation, I might double him. But as far as him coming into the game, and I'm, go and I'm telling my guys, this is the guy we have to take out of the offense, I'm not doing that. He doesn't, he doesn't warrant that kind of attention. Devorah Bowman was quoted by ESPN as saying just that, that he's the one that they fear the most because that's the guy that Dak is most comfortable finding routinely. Well, look at the numbers. Yeah, because he's only running five yards. And Dak is only throwing the ball five yards. Yeah, and so guess not... what? And then he runs 25 more yards. And he doesn't push the ball down the field, so that plays right into our hands. Uh, oh, now you're an hour. San Francisco is your team. No, now, they're right? not. Well, when they play your team, any mm -hmm. team that plays your team is yep. my team. That's how I root. The Cowboys have the 22nd-ranked defense, total defense, 23rd in scoring. Now, we do know the 49ers are, are, are slightly challenged scoring the football. So when you're challenged scoring the football, the one thing that you need, what the doctor orders, mm -hmm. is the Dallas Cowboys defense. Mm. I love them playing on the mm. road. I really do. I love them when they're sitting on the bench, which is what is going to happen again. Because Ezekiel Elliott, you got to admit it, against the last two weeks, actually, but especially against the Bears, oh, against the Bears. is emerging hold as a force in hold this up, hold league up, hold up, that time, you time knew up. he would hold be. Up, hold up, hold up. Hold, hold, hold on what? You just now you told me earlier this week, oh, Carson Wentz only beat the Bears and the Browns. They're the two worst teams in football. Now you're praising Ezekiel Elliott for playing that one of the two worst teams in football. Is that what you're doing? He's just a kid. He's barely started. So what is Wentz? Huh? A grown man? Well, he got to play the Bears and the Browns, right? But you held, with? But you held that against him, I but did. you're highlighting it for Ezekiel Elliott. He was coming out of a game where you crushed him for fumbling twice and you losing didn't. one. I, I did. I don't like it. <laughs> but we're starting to see him emerge, and I'm, I'm just going on the record. We've got two, two really good ex-Ohio State backs. Carlos Hyde's really good running the ball for your team. I say Ezekiel will have a better game than Carlos Hyde and control the football along with Dax. Well, they did. Uh, the 49ers did a pretty good job opening week against Todd Gurley. 17 carries, 47 yards. Mm -hmm. I think Todd Gurley is every bit the back that uh, Ezekiel Elliott is. Mm -hmm. They did a great job they on did. him. They did. Opening think, night. I think because Dez Bryant is not going to be in the game, they will drop that eighth guy down in the box, make Dak beat them throwing the football. You believe he can do it. I want to see it. Okay. My Dallas Cowboys lead the NFL in rushing touchdowns with seven. They had eight total all of last year. Think about that. So you have ripped. So what is your quarterback Wait a doing? second. You have ripped repeatedly Dak Prescott. How many touchdown passes does he have? He's got one. Yeah. But they get it in the end zone a lot because he can run it in the end zone. Zeke can run it in the end zone. Alfred Morris can run it in the end zone. They've been on a red zone roll, finishing off drives, pounding the ball into the end zone instead of tossing the ball into the end zone. He can't throw it down. So trust no, I think they trust him. Yeah, I don't what think what they would trust you him. rather do? Would you rather throw it or run it into the end zone? I think I'd rather run it. I'd every rather time. get it into the end zone. Okay, well, they've been getting it. And nobody, really? yeah, and I'm, I'm going to remind you again. What who, about when who, they played the Giants? Did they leads, get it in? Well, they would have if, I don't if know the what receiver would have run did, out of bounds. What did they do? They lost. Okay, by a that's point. all we need. That's but, all we need. But do. they would have won by a point if Terrence Williams had just stepped out Stop of it. the football. Well, you know they would have. No, I don't. How do I know? Huh? How do I know? Well, it's like you saying. If they'd handed to Marshawn on the last play of the Super Bowl, and you but told, they didn't, and right? You, and and you they didn't. Okay, he okay. didn't run out of bounds. Uh, my guy, and I, I give it up because the scoreboard said that my guys lost. But Dak Prescott, you know in your heart, played well enough to win that game. No, he didn't. He was even clutch late in that game, setting up what should have been a long distance but makeable field goal. Averaging five bang. yards per attempt on the pass play. That won't win you very many games. So what do you, what's the one. score? What's the score of the ball I'm, game? I'm not there yet. I'm not there. All I know is that we will pound the ball. We will control the clock. We what is this the we? Defense off. It's, it's we. It's my team. I grew up loving this team. I don't think you grew up lo loving the San Francisco 49ers, did you? I love them a lot more since they're playing your team. I know. I got that. So 
I'm going to say that my defense, when it is on the field, will overachieve in this game as it has all year. I think it's being underrated. My defense is way better than you give it credit for, and you will see this. And now to my ace in the hole. The great irony of this conversation is that a man who has all week blasted Blaine Gabbard, how can he still be a starting quarterback, <laughs> is now betting on blame or blame, blame. blame Gabbard. Yep. And you will be blaming him on Monday and blaming him and blame. How could you not put in Colin Kaepernick? I don't know why not, because all I know is Blaine Gabbard is supposed to play the whole game on Sunday, and I love it because it gives me a chance. It's my ace in the hole, and it's the one that's going to burn a hole in your pocket is that you are betting on the wrong guy. Yep. Blame Gabbard. You really? Told, I you, can't believe you you're told, doing this. You told me the one stat that you love the most about quarterbacks is QBR. Mm -hmm. Blame Gabbard is the eighth-rated quarterback in the National Football right. League. That's good enough you for me. You got him. I'm glad you have so, him. So, I, I'm going to let you have him this time. So if that QBR stat... Mm -hmm. Does it work out in my favor? Yeah, After yeah. you told me it's the end-all, be-all for quarterback, yep. you and I go have a problem on Monday. Okay, we will have a problem. All I know for sure is that the DAC attack will just keep executing and executing and executing down the field until it executes as in kills your pick. That's what's going to happen. Can you stop giving him all these names, the DAC attack? From here on out, I'm calling him Dakota. I'm not saying DAC. I'm saying his name like is Dakota. That name, actually. His Dakota name is Dakota. It's, it's a good but name. I want you to stop. That's a movie star's the, name the, the because DAC. he is becoming a the movie DAC star. The DAC attack. And, and listen. I'm not saying he's the next Peyton Manning, as they're yes, saying Carson Wentz is. Yes, I'm are. not saying that he's the next Brett Favre, as they're saying Carson Wentz is, or the next Ben Roethlisberger, as they're saying Carson Wentz. In fact, Carson Wentz has become so big, I think he's got his yeah. own network now, isn't it? The as, CW? <laughs> is that right? The CW? The Carson Wentz? Is that the? Is that and, what he got? The Carson have, Wentz and network? And he has a phrase called oh. Wentz in a lifetime. Wentz in a lifetime? <laughs> oh. oh, oh God, Car Carson. Wow, that's just crazy <laughs> and lame, but it's okay. Yes. All right, all right. Well, you hang in with Carson Wentz Who and with picking? Blame Gabbard. I, I am picking Dallas all day and all night, 23 to 20 on a Dan Bailey clutch field goal. Close game, physical game, survival game. My team survives and lives to play on for the division title against the Bungles. You know that kicking surface is really tough to kick out there, Skip. I know, it's rough. Low sea level, it's always yeah. saturated. Soggy and yeah, sticky yeah, yeah. and wet. I, I got it. Okay. I got it, and I, I don't have any problem with this whatsoever.